Hello everybody and welcome to the Sober Stew podcast. You are listening and watching a recovery podcast. Today, my guest is Ryan. He's coming and joining us from Scotland to share his journey of sobriety to us. Ryan, how are you doing? Very well, thanks for having me on. No, wicked mate, thank you for coming on. And thank you also for being a supporter um, to the Sober Stew podcast and the Instagram page, which you have been, I think, right from the off, haven't you? Yeah, I see the straight away and for the straight away, it's been brilliant. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. So, okay, let's dive in with a question. I've looked at your fact find and um, I noticed that your childhood, the, your mum and dad drunk and you spent a lot of time with your grandparents. Is that true? How did, how did that feel and how did that affect you as a kid? It, it was probably just normal. Growing up, you seen parents, grandparents drinking, uh, more so my grandparents who, my papa's still alive today, he, he still drinks kind of all day almost, but somebody you hardly ever see drunk, so it was always just, when I was with them, they had a wee chalet at the time, we went and stayed up there, and it was just normal, everyone there in about that area, they, they drank, that's how they socialised, and it just, it was normal, and it's just how I seen it as adults would socialise and how they would spend their time. Okay, and would you <clears> live with your grandparents as well as your parents? Would you split your time or would you always be with your parents? Aye, so my mum and dad always worked full time, so I see during like school holidays and stuff like that, and even before I started school, I would be with my grandparents quite a lot, so I'd go there and stay for a week or sometimes longer at a time, if my parents were working. Gotcha. So that was normal, and you enjoyed that? I enjoyed it, there was no issues, I was always loved, always supporting growing up, and it was just normal. Something I ever seen as a negative was alcohol, it was just a part of life, when you grow up, yeah, you yeah. start drinking. Yep. So where, we, where did your love affair with booze come from? Where, where, when, when did it start? My mum, God rest her mum, died uh, nearly 10 years ago. But her and my dad's kind of way of bringing us up, I think my sister was the same, was see instead of us getting to the age where we want to drink and get it to a park and nobody knows you're drinking, they introduced it in the house. So when I was maybe 14, 15, they would say, like, have a can of beer and you can sit with us while we are having a drink, so I would have a couple of it, and that was to try and stop the, the novel way of going out and drinking, but obviously in my case it didn't really it pan out that way. No, no. So, so that, that, that's <laughs> where it started. <laughs> Do you know what, it's weird you say that, because when, you know, you talk, I've spoke to people who live in in various different European countries, and yeah. they introduce alcohol like that in, in, in the family environment. And it kind of does work to, to a certain degree. Yeah. And I wonder why, and, and I've always wondered why, that <clears> in the UK, in Scotland, in Ireland, in England, in Wales, it don't work. I know. Not really. It's, I it's don't crazy. get it. I know. It is. I, I think the way, maybe when you look at Italy and Spain, that they have a glass of wine with a nice meal, whereas we are ham on drink to get wasted. And you know what it's like when you're growing up. You're, uh, <laughs> I've been sick everywhere and it's a disaster. Okay, so, yeah, and do you know what? That, 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 is, the, that is the reality. You change, yeah. you know, you're drinking to get hammered. And is it to get hammered? Is it to change the way you feel? Um, for me, it was both, I think. I wanted to get hammered. Yeah. But I, I like that middle ground and all. Do you know where you've had a few and then you become yeah. this, this, this other character? Ten foot and tall. Before you know it. You're on, you're, you're on another trajectory <laughs> then, aren't you? You, you? You're way fucking gone and yeah. you're hammered. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you don't totally. know how you got there, really. I know. No, totally. I, I think that's a big thing when you grow up as well. It's like a bit of confidence it gives you. Yeah. You're like this big man because you've had a few beers and you're, you're feeling a million dollars, but in reality, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. And, and I suppose to stop drinking as as a heavy drinker, as an alcoholic, whatever whatever the person is, whatever the person is who's watching this, what you are, what I am, yeah. to stop drinking, it must be taking things away from your life. So what did it take away from you? Probably a few friendships. Uh, you know yourself, when you stop drinking, you maybe ask who's what to go out, and when they know you're not drinking, you don't get the same response as you would if you were to go out to, to the pubs all day and get get really drunk, so I, I felt that was, so socially, essentially socially was a big, I took a big knock straight away. We don't go out as much, now that I don't drink, eh, for obvious reasons, what's the point, but I would say probably socially took the biggest knock 
in my life. Okay. And what made you stop? So, see, looking back, I probably had an issue with alcohol probably a couple of years after I even started drinking, like 17, 18, when I look back now, I was like, that was so obvious, it was a problem. Yeah, yeah. But Do you feel you was fucked then? I, I, so, I was thinking of this all day before I come on, and there was days, I was a, I left school, and I was a hairdresser slash barber, and there was days where I would go for a pint at lunchtime in my lunch hour, like a couple yeah, of yeah, pints, yeah. and I'm thinking, you're yeah. 17, 18, that's, yeah, man. it's totally not right, but at the time, I just said it's normal, and it was stuff I was doing, but, there was loads of times when I've stopped drinking and it was fine, but it was last year. Uh, my, my lead up was supposed to be 2nd of January 2022. It was going to be my last, my last day of drinking. So I was going to watch the old firm game up here, Celtic Rangers. Uh, so I was going to watch that, have a few beers as normal, and then the next day that was me off it. Which we all do, we always pick a time and a date which is perfect in our heads to stop. And I woke up. Uh, we'd spent Christmas at my, my in-laws house and woke up on the 27th of December and I looked in the mirror and I was like I look like shit uh, felt like shit I was training in the gym and stuff like that as normal and I just felt awful and I said to Kirsten who was my partner I was like this is it today's the day uh, so just decided for that that was me I was going to try and stop so reached out to a couple of people and it, touch wood, it's been it's been good since. Yeah, the, the first couple of months was horrible. This last, the last couple of months, you say? No, no, the first couple. The first couple, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to know what your mental state was like. You know, like you said, you looked in the mirror and you looked like shit and you felt like Aye. shit, but how, how did you feel up there? To be honest, I was kind of sad. Uh, yeah. I, I just looked at myself and I was like, what is this? And I, you know, I was thinking ahead long term, which I do quite a lot. I was yeah. thinking of like my kids and what are they going to think of me if I continue the way I'm going? Like, what kind of role model am I to them? Yeah, man. Uh, just the way I'm drinking and so see, I was going to the gym and stuff like that. And I was keeping myself fit. And I was going to work, but I was just going in, hammering the beers, and uh, I just felt awful. I felt quite sad at how it was going, and I just thought this needs to it needs to end. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Using that word sad, right? I've used that word a lot. It, it, you know, in my recovery, and sad to me is such a it, it, three letters, yeah, but it's a, such a fucking big word. It's <laughs> it a is. massive word because it's like sad is like a level of depression, isn't it? I suppose yeah. or low. Yeah, so I use the word low a lot as well. If I felt low, I say I'm low, and that, and that sadness is there. But when you've got sadness, that's a horrible place to be. Yeah, because totally. nothing makes you happy, does it? No, no. Even even when you get back to when I first stopped, see see the first like if my partner was here she would tell you we went a walk and I always remember it was hug me day and we went a, it's a nice walk, it's actually near us, took the dog and the kids and I was fucking so crab it. I was <laughs> in such a bad mood. I look back and I laugh now, but that day it was just like it was like my life had ended. Aye. Like I couldn't be bald, couldn't be fucked with anything. But my life had ended. A big part of me had been taken away because I couldn't drink. Obviously, I look back now and I was totally wrong, but at that point, I was like, what am I going to do? Yeah. I was thinking real ahead, I was thinking the boys are, my, my oldest is 13, he turns 13 in March this year, but I was thinking, he turns 18, can I go and take him for a beer when he gets married, yeah, when this happens yeah. and that, and I'm like, oh, this, what's going to happen? I know happen? the one, so, yeah, I know the one, you project, you're like, you know, like I had this chat with someone at Christmas, and, um, you know, I think I got sober in the November and I was talking to people at the end of the November and when the December it in, I was talking to this geezer in, in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous and I said to him about Christmas coming up. And he went, Stu, he said, the way you've described your drinking to me, he said, Christmas weren't a fucking, what was Christmas? Like, you drunk every day, every yeah. single day of the year. <laughs> what is Christmas? Like, why I... are you even worried about Christmas? Yeah. And I sat there and I had to put it into perspective and it was like, yeah, you know, it's irrelevant, isn't it? It's irrelevant, totally. I think. Yeah. And that projection of worrying about your kids' birthdays or the yeah. party or the Christmas or whatever it is, it's all about, for me, it was all about keeping it real for today. Yeah, totally. And just dealing with the dealing with the day you got because that's the only one you can, you can control, yeah? That, that's it. It's 100%. It's, it's obviously cliche or one day at a time and stuff like that, but it is so true because you're, you're thinking okay. about stuff in 20 years' time, which might never happen if, you, I mean, we don't know what's happened, we don't know what's ahead of us, but... 
literally focus on that day ahead. But for me, that first couple of months was it was so rough. It was. So did you find the the physically not consuming alcohol rough, or was it mentally, or was it a combination of both? I guess probably a combination of both. Because I, I was so used to it. I was in the routine. I was going to work, promising myself in the morning I was going to drink that night. Going home, going to the gym, coming in, and then having a drink. Uh, so that that was back in a daily routine. So it was just like sometimes you say I'm bored, but it's just a it's it was such a rut I was in, I suppose. Uh, so that was harder than mentally as well. As I say, I was thinking far too much ahead. Uh, Life in general, like how can I go on holiday with a beer? We, we all see the the, the, the Facebook posts they take their picture a couple of times when you're at the airport and stuff like. How am I going to manage to go to the airport? So it was lo- just loads of stuff I was thinking about, probably overthinking it, and it made it made it a lot harder. I feel. Yeah. How how was your relationship with your is it say, your wife? You say. Yeah, we're getting married this year. Okay. Uh, well, congratulations as well. Thanks. But um, yeah, but how was how was your relationship towards the end when you decided that you're not going to drink no more? But how also was it in them first couple of months as well when you found it really tough? Probably, the custom is a good support. She still drinks, right. uh, so so she was a good support. But it's it's strangely the first long term relationship I've been in where my partner's not said you need to stop drinking. Okay. So although she's been a really, really good support that I've stopped and uh, I've been quite lucky, I've got a few good supports, family and stuff like that. But she's the first person that I've been with who's not really pushed it. I had to this time and I think that's maybe made a difference because before when you're yeah. told don't do this, don't do that, sometimes you you put a do it all. Yeah, mate. Do you know what I mean? And you, you do it more. I, I, oh, yeah, off. you do it more. Go <laughs> fuck you. I'm do, I'm, I, you know, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've got it under control and. We're, we're good at lying to ourselves, but also other yeah. people. We we some sort of I don't know if it's a defence mechanism or whatever it is, but we're good at it. Uh, we are good at it, <laughs> and I feel like to drink, to drink at heavy levels, yeah, alcoholically, whatever you want to look at it. Yeah, I feel like you have to lie, you have to manipulate because yeah, because you know inside, deep down, you know inside it's not right. Yeah, um, and if other people like ex partners are telling you or making comments. And you don't want to stop. You have to be dishonest, yeah. You yeah. have to. Totally. No, but then that gives you that gives you guilt and shame, doesn't it? That dishonesty. Aye. So it, then you drink more. Aye. It, 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 can I, it, the fact that it pisses you off probably shows you that they're right when, when they're saying these these things. You know what I mean? So I, for, for the first month, it was probably custody dealing with me being not me because I'm quite a, I would say quite upbeat normally but that first month two months is uh, my, my personality totally changed and, and that was it was strange for me because any other time I've stopped drinking see like you, we've all done it we've took a week off drinking or two weeks to prove that we're not an alcoholic which is ridiculous but that's what I've done quite a lot but I always felt better for the two weeks or that month or sober October whatever I've done in the past but this time was different, but I guess because in my mind I knew it was forever. That's a valid point, yeah, because I'm not saying I've got issues with sober January, sober October, or dry January, whatever it is, but I look at them and I think, I get the reason why they're there. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I do get the reason why they're there. But like, you just hit the nail on the head. When you've done uh, sober October before, it wasn't forever, was it? No. No. In the 1st of November, you're going out and you're drinking more than you've done. <laughs> back Straight on in it the to hatch. celebrate. Yeah. 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 And do you think, I mean, this is just a guess, this is a stab in the dark, but how many people do you think go into uh, dry January or sober October and they have that mindset? Oh, just that they're going to ha- hammer the beers straight away? Probably yeah. 99%. Yeah, mate, yeah. I think you're probably right. Yeah, I do. And you, And like you say, if you get to the end of that month, Dangerously, you can say to yourself, "Well, I've done that. I'm not an alcoholic. Yeah. I ain't got a problem with a booze. Yeah. I've just had a month off it." So exactly. That, so I suppose that's sometimes I have that little battle with those those sober January and, and dry and or dry January sober October. Sorry, I have that battle because I feel like sometimes, as much as it can do good for people, I feel like it could potentially be dangerous as well. Yeah, totally. Because they'll just go to bed straight away when the, the new month starts. 
Yeah, it's an hard one because I know why it's there. It's there. Yeah. To, it's there to help. But yeah, of course. It's, it's, I think when you've got an addictive mind, and when you're dishonest, like you said as well, it's um, it's difficult to get. It's difficult to put it down, isn't it? Yeah. But as I say, that's why I done it. There's always me weeks here and there, and just to prove a point uh, that I, I'd I'd done it. I hadn't done it for six months before as well. But even then, it was there a long term. It was always going to be just a a week and a reset, if you like. So what's your view now? Because you are now you're just over a year, aren't you? So that's that's massive. After the year, it was obviously brilliant. But again, like we said earlier, always just don't get too carried away. It's a year, it's brilliant, but. Just keep it a day at a time, keep flowing along, keep... And I think you need to remind yourself why you stopped, what the negatives were, what the positives have been since you stopped, and obviously it outweighs, there's the... There's no comparison, it's much better, life's a lot better. The, the biggest thing for me is I'm a better parent, and I always, always look to myself as a good dad anyway, but... But there was stuff starting to happen, and I was like, this is the good. Uh, but now it's, it's a massive difference. I feel I'm a lot more patient. I'll spend a lot more time with the boys. And that for me, if that's the only reason, it's a good enough reason to, to keep going with the sobriety. That makes me smile because, <laughs> like, yeah, look, uh, you know, back in the day when, when I was in active addiction, um, I had a young son uh, when I was 19 and, and I, I didn't get sober until he was uh, 9, 10. And it was like you know, he experienced a lot. He experienced a lot of me disappearing, um, not being there, not being present. You know, like even when you are present, you're not present. Um, if you're hanging, you know what I mean. You're hanging out your ass from the day before, and you know, I'm 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 relying upon my parents to entertain me, entertain him when he's younger, um, because I felt so rough. And so getting sober and being a parent of one that you feel really proud of yeah that's a beautiful feeling isn't it as it's brilliant and as i say that that's been the best thing for me personally because uh, i used to the boys are at the football and boxing and stuff and i was giving them advice with the sport but when you're sitting there trying to budweiser or whatever kind of lag it doesn't look the same uh, so <laughs> now i can properly give them advice with, with fitness and stuff like that and help them with general life with a clear mind and you're, you're not saying stuff and you're drunk and it's a lot of rubbish half the time so uh, it's made a big difference so it is and it sounds daft but even football training and boxing and stuff like that you're starting to grudge pick your own kids up from football training because it finishes at eight that's not normal that's yeah. the truth though mate that, and yeah. it ain't even daft that's the reality and do you know what yeah. being honest about it, that's important because yeah. you know and it's brave to be honest about that and that's exactly the same for me it's like it comes a chore I don't want to because you're encroaching in my time. Totally. And that's sad, isn't it? And that's uh, why you end up, yeah. It's really sad, and, and I was in a bit of a, I don't know if it's probably the same for a lot of people, but see, if I had something like that on, where it was football training was on at half six to eight, I would get back in the house for quarter past eight, get the boys ready for their bed, blah, blah, blah. But then I would just drink later. Yeah. So where I would normally go to bed at 11, I'd maybe stay up to two to catch up. It sounds Oh, dark. you would do that, yeah, ah, yeah, you would I would, do that. Yeah, I, would, I would stay up later, you, that's, so you would have, you would have what you would have had normally. You yeah. just would have right. started later. So yeah, mate. Yeah. Go, oh, you're, not, you're not missing out then, would you? <laughs> <laughs> so bad, but uh, that that was the sort of stuff I would do to catch up and all these things just added up to just be obviously before I stopped. I was looking at them. I was really, really, really need to stop. And there was I know I'm kind of a wee tangent here, but I was working and it was like we said earlier. When you're at work, you say, I'm not going to drink tonight. Uh, it was a day I walked past a pub and I was like, I could go a pint. And it was, you're talking like quarter to 11 in the morning. And I'd been drinking to kind of late on. And I think, gee, this is getting worse. This is, it could get me in a lot of more trouble than I've already been in before or more yeah. hassle. So it was they good. You know, and, and, and the profession that you was working in at the time, is it the same profession you're in now? I, I, so I'm still, still doing that. Uh, to be fair, that was probably one thing that really helped me at the very start as well, was uh, my supervisor at work and stuff like that. Uh, that. That was a big step for me because it was something I always knew that I was going to have to do was speak to them about it. And the day I did that, it was like a, a weight was just lifted. Yeah. And then, it, 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 and then the supports there. Aye, totally. Do, do you get... 
random drug and alcohol tested in your line of work? Believe it or not, I, I, think, I, I think it can happen. I've not personally had it. Uh, right. You'd think that you'd think you would, wouldn't you? I know. I mean, I mean, obviously, if, if you turned up and somebody thought you were you were drink driving or whatever, you would you would probably get tested. But uh, that that was again something I knew that after a, after the disclose uh, my issues. I couldn't go back in rough again because it would be obvious. Uh, so it was good for me because I knew that was there. Uh, so so you could get random tests, but I would say more so that's if they had an idea. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So that was a freeing part for you as well. And, yeah. and it is, it's about that, it's about that secrets keep you sick saying. Yeah. It is. As soon as you start vocalising and telling yes. people, and, and even when you tell people sometimes, it's, it, you're kind of asking for help, aren't you? Yeah, really? of course. If you're telling someone, you're asking for help. Aye. It was a strange one, actually, because I had a, we, we do, like, every year you go in and speak to your supervisor, how you're getting on, it's like a, an annual review, if you like. And I was the way out the door, because I just stopped about two weeks, three weeks before, and she just happened to say, and there's obviously nothing at home it could affect your work. And I just stopped and I told her and then I was upset because I started talking about my kids and stuff like that. But that, that moment there, I think, is probably one of the things that's kept me sober. Because if I, if I never told them, I'd have probably done two or three months saying, told you I've not got a problem. I can have a few beers again, a couple of nights a week. And then it slowly goes back to where I was. So I think that's one thing that's really, really been, been such a big difference for any other time that I'd stopped. Yeah, that that made me smile. You saying that because that that is the part where you got a bit of freedom, wasn't it? Yeah, that oh, was brilliant. Yeah, I feel like in, in my my missus will tell you like it went for the the doom and gloom for that couple of months. To it was like a weight had just been lifted. Then I started to be the week kind of sober Instagram, which has been brilliant. And yeah. and you're seeing all these different people that's no drinking and that loving life, and it's it's just brilliant. It was then I don't know how to explain it. It yeah, was yeah. just like, oh, I found a wee kind of community that I can. <laughs> get help and support, it's brilliant, it's really, really good. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Oh, well, here's a big question. So what do you describe yourself? as a problem drinker or as an alcoholic? What, what's your definition, or have you not got one? Well, that, that was another thing at the, at the start when I was so grumpy and struggling. I, I kept trying to define it. Then, like, it, it, when I spoke to the boys' mum, who I got on really well with as well, uh, she's been a, a good support and help, because she's knew me since I've been 18. We had kids at 20, I think mean, it's 20, 21 hours the boys were born, so, like, she's like, you know, you're an alcoholic. So she, she said that, you, you know. And probably deep down I did, but I still didn't want to label myself. And uh, I'd probably say a functioning alcoholic I was, because uh, I was still able to go to work and stuff like that. And I think there's yeah. loads of people like that in Britain where they loads. go to work and because they make their work they feel like they've not got an issue. Right, but that makes it even more dangerous, mate, doesn't it? Because Aye. if you if you put it if you put yourself in that category, which in the end I couldn't, because I was a I was a blivering alcoholic who, who yeah. couldn't even wash, do you know what I mean? Aye, but okay. but my brother, for example, he would binge and he'd have three, four, five, six months off. And then he'd find that harder then to get sober. So if you're putting yourself in a category of a of a function alcoholic, you can go, look what I've got, look what I do, look what I bring home, leave me alone. Yeah. And it gives you another excuse, doesn't it? Of course it does. Aye, you're, you're probably right. Uh, aye, that, that does make it more dangerous because you're saying I can work, I've got a car, yeah. I've got a house, I've got this, I've got that. Aye, so it probably does in a way. Yeah, I would say that's where I fell in. That year I got a book for my Christmas, it was the Unexpected Joy of Being Sober. So so I got that book and when I was reading that, that helped as well because I was reading it and I was relating to so much and going, right, okay, hey, this person's got the same issues as I had. They've stopped drinking, I should really go with this and uh, without labelling myself as such, but I get, aye, if that was what it was, I would say a functional alcoholic's what the label would have been. Uh, but, I get too stressed about that at the start. I was wanting somebody to tell me exactly what I was, exactly what I needed to do. But, but again, I think even at that point, I was looking for somebody to say, oh, you're not that bad. You can drink one mm -hmm. day a week. That's what you can do. You can have five or six beers on a Saturday night and that'll be you. But I knew, I knew deep down that was never going to... I tried it for ten, over 10 years to, to cut. It never worked. Work. Work. Didn't fucking work. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe that's because you was a functioning alcoholic. It didn't work. Aye. It, it, Aye. You need that psychic change, I think, to, to become sober. And and to get that, 
in my experience, you need a bit of gift of desperation. And I think when you feel that sad and when you start thinking about your kids and you're projecting and you start analysing that, um, that was your maybe that was your gift of desperation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's that's probably right. It was just I mean obviously I'll get a wee but I'm not old, but I'm getting older and I'm like, I need to, to get a grip here and uh like do I want the boys to follow my my kind of path? I definitely don't. So that that was a big thing for me and I think that's a problem we've got in the country in general as well, is the how we bring kids up about alcohol. Yeah, I, I mean I was never yeah. told it was bad growing up ever. No, me neither, me neither. And, Oof. you know, I think at the age of 14, 15, like yourself, I wanted to be out there with all the older lot and I just wanted to get on it. And, and it was yeah. like, that's normal because everyone else is doing it or my brother did it, he was 10 years older than me. And if you slipped into the pub with your mates and their older brothers, they're all doing it. And it's like, you, it's just that vibe, isn't it? When you get yeah. into a pub at that age, yeah. you know, if you want to be a man, you feel like a man when you're in there at 14, 15, don't you? Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, and then I'm, you want to drink that, oh, man. <laughs> you try it and then you're lying inside <laughs> the pub being sick. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and your head's spinning like a mad oh, when you get home and that. But do you know what? I just want to go back because something was in my head. We were okay. talking about when you was, and, like, you was debating with yourself of what title or what you would have put on. Yes. For me, right, when I voiced that I was an alcoholic, I then can't turn back. This was what my mindset was, right? So... I don't really want to say I'm an alcoholic until I'm ready to try and do something about it, right? Because if I say it too soon, and then people know that I know I'm an alcoholic, yes. they're all going to know what I'm doing is wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Exactly, I totally, hundred percent. Because it's like the start when I first stopped, folks. Oh, what are you not drinking for? But you, you know, it's like to get your hair, so that's why you're not drinking. That's just have a beer, you'll be fine. So yeah. probably quite. Early as on, I just said, look, had a bit of a drinking problem, but that was it, and it kind of ends the conversation. Uh, but yeah. I was, when did I go for I got an operation in May, so during, I was off for four months after my knee operation, and that time helped me as well get used to it. And it was a part of me now that I'd stopped drinking, and when I come back to work, I felt right, just tell people. And then obviously, I'm um, I've put stuff on social media and stuff like that because I'm, I'm kind of I'm proud of what I've done and how how I've went about it and I think you need that it takes a while for that to because it's embarrassing ah, for me anyway it was embarrassing at first and not really want too much folk to know just your your close circle because you trust them and then now I'm like okay let's go for it I'm happy okay. <laughs> hello guys hope you're enjoying this week's episode just a quick break here I want to ask you a big favour if you are enjoying the show enjoying the episode enjoying the podcast can you please subscribe please like please share i just want to let you know how important that is it, the bigger this channel gets the more people that see it means that we can affect people's sobriety in a positive way their addiction recovery we might change a life we might save a life enjoy the rest of the episode thank you Do you know what <clears throat> you've just hit the nail on the head being proud of what you are right whether that's in recovery, being sober, or whatever the profession you work in, whatever, but being being proud of what you are, so yeah. important in it. So, so I, you know, as you know, I tell everyone that I'm I'm a recovered alcoholic. Yeah. I I have got no issues. I, it's, it's on the other side of that. I'm proud of that because I wouldn't yeah. be who I am today without being recovered. Yeah, of course. and even would you? No, that's it. Totally. It's it's, it's a hard one, isn't it? But it's I, it's just way the things we've we've done it, we've went through it. And, it hopefully help other people who's who's start their journey or whatever that that's yeah. the that's the aim we we ever yeah, yeah. try and no, guide them but it's being a, honest is important I think and I think I was going to ask you that a second ago if you if you if if there's a newcomer watching or listening who's who's new into sobriety and telling them that tell people because the more people you tell like you did that you've yeah. got an issue with alcohol the the less they will be trying to give you one a drink. A hundred percent. It's that 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 was a a massive help. Like I'm obviously getting married, as I said in May this year. My stag is going to be in Portugal in March. Right. I've actually I was in I was in Portugal uh, last year on holiday, and I seen where I'm going, and I'm like, it's going to be quite rough because the strip's mad. But 
everybody that's coming knows my position and I know that they're not going to just have a drink as your stag do so I know I'm going to have that support I know I'm going to go there I know I'm not going to drink and I'll have a good time uh, so, so you, I think you need that because if you don't you've got constant pressure to drink uh, and, and if you've if you're running about with, with guys or lasses who are trying to get you to drink knowing your issues then they'll, they'll know you they'll know your friends are they yeah, you got. You, they got to go, man. They have got to go. Yeah, and and that is one thing that I that I hear a lot in sobriety. Any my sobriety that the people who I fought were my circle, they ain't no more, and they weren't pretty lively after I stopped drinking as well. To be honest yeah. with you, you know they weren't. I'm not saying they were horrible, bad people, but they they weren't the people I needed in my yeah. life when yeah. I ain't drinking. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I see it work uh, every day. People with obviously addiction issues and stuff like that. And, a lot of them go into recovery and they spend months sometimes and they come out and they're doing great but if you go back to the same circle they were in yeah usually they go back to the way they were unfortunately it's yeah. sad to see it's hard it's so hard Ryan. and do you know what i feel like going back to what you said a minute ago about telling people and everyone on their stag do that knows you know it, this is my advice here for people who, who, are, who are trying to stay and get sober the, the, if you're not telling people that you've got an issue with your drinking, maybe you're leaving a, a little gap open that you can have a drink again because it, it's you see what I'm like saying? You're, you're leaving that wee glimmer and I hope that you can moderate it somehow. It's yeah, going to magically yeah. just click. But yeah, and like it, you said, you tried for ten years before it didn't make it, it, it didn't work in, did it? it? Does it work? <laughs> see, see, even this time after after four or five months, uh, I bought it for a meal. Uh, me and one of my mates and his, his missus and Dean Kirsty I'd say to him we're just sitting eating dinner do you know it's just obviously your mind playing up with you at times but I was like maybe when it, the summer passes I'll maybe try and these like that you can he? you can he? he's like you know you can he? and I'm like cheers I needed that <laughs> you just yeah, need, you need yeah, brought yeah. in but I, I, I've been dead lucky yeah we one of my pals he's a bit older than me yeah, he's a recovered alcoholic and He's been almost like, although I'd, I've never been to meetings, he's been like a sponsor to me yeah, all the way through it. Yeah. So, so he's yeah, yeah. he's always at the end of the phone and I, I, check, I text him and I phone him, but and he's been he's been brilliant as well. So he kind of ends me in as well and gives me advice. It's been great. Well, Ryan, let's dive into that. Why ain't you been to meetings? What was the reasons why you didn't go to them? So, well, part of it was obviously, I'm not obviously, but at the start it was always like sometimes you're embarrassed a wee bit. Yeah. Uh, my, my job. Obviously, you know, when the police. Yep. Uh, that's gonna like, that's gonna be awkward for you, isn't it? I think. So I was like, the job I do, I meet a lot of people who go to these meetings, and I'm like, if I yeah. come up to a meeting, how is it gonna go? Uh, I, I considered online meetings as well, but I thought we'll just we'll just see how it goes without, and then. I mean, I've still spoken about potentially going eventually, but I feel now I'm in a good place with the. The, the, the setup I've got, the, the support I've got, the online stuff that I'm, I'm on as well with the, the Instagrams and stuff like that helps. So I feel that I'm in a good enough place at the minute, but probably it was more to do, to do with my, my job at the start. That's what I was. That's quite that, that in itself is quite sad, isn't it? Really, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Did you did? Okay, I know that you had the embarrassment at the beginning, did, but did you want to go to meetings and felt like you couldn't? Or was uh, there reasons why you just... Yeah, exactly yeah, what it was. Yeah. So, so, so I looked at meetings, I uh, asked the, about half an hour for Glasgow. So I looked right. at going into Glasgow and did, did a couple of meetings there. But uh, in hindsight, it probably would have helped at the start. But I didn't go because I thought, oh, I can still see somebody. Uh, like, what if they don't take me seriously? Everything... You're, do you know what it's like? Your, your mind's kind of played tricks on you. Uh, so I just, I never went. But probably in hindsight, I should have went and tried it at least at the start. But you're, but you're not saying never say never. You're saying potentially that might, that might uh, happen one day. It, it yeah. may happen one day. There's a couple of people that's actually, they've invited me to a meeting uh, yeah, locally. And I still might, I still might go and, yeah, yeah. go and do that one day. Well, uh, I'm a, I am a big advocate, Ryan. I'll be honest with you. And the, yeah. and the twelve step recovery program. I mean, it sounds like you're doing fantastic anyway. But I've got to be honest. The twelve step recovery program can put you on another two or three, four levels. Like you know, it's it's just a design for living 
that I've never I've never seen anything like it in my life. It, personally, I just think it's amazing. And um, if you work it with the tools that, that you can get, I just think the serene and peace and 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 the ability to help others. Um, ability to own your mistakes all these things that maybe you wouldn't have done in the past yeah come second nature do you know what yeah. i mean yeah no it's it's, it's it's something i might still consider as i say but i'll i'll just play it the year now and see see yeah, what yeah. I, if i feel like i need that i'll be there uh, again if I, if I met somebody who wanted to go to a meeting i would go along if they were just starting or whatever right. to help uh, it's almost like that it's important to try and help the next guy or lassie coming up and start their journey as well so do you find that now you're sober you can spot people who have got alcohol (laughs) (laughs) we're actually we're actually talking about that uh, yesterday me and my dad went out for a coffee my dad as i said before he was a workaholic and an alcoholic uh, he owns a pub so does the help now (laughs) Uh, he's had a pub for 10 years now but he has stopped drinking nine months ago now so he, he's doing brilliant, uh, but we were out and we seen a guy. You can, you can straight away you, you notice and you think quite sad. It, it's everywhere, but when you stop, you realise it, it magnifies it for you. You notice it every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I yeah. that that's one thing I've noticed that you, it's it's a lot. It's probably a bigger problem than I realised. I think it's a massive problem. I think it's massive, you know. Um, I had, I did a podcast with William Porter. I think it was three, four weeks ago, and he and I said to him, I'd read a, a few figures about how many of the population I'm talking about in the world, yeah, drink yeah. alcohol. He told me it was like eighty-seven percent of the population of the world drink consume alcohol. Yeah, that fucking blew me away. <laughs> That's seven percent. Well, it's mad. That's mad. And the way I look at alcohol, and I feel like it's a scientific fact, it is a drug, yeah? So 87% of the population are consuming a mind-altering substance. Yeah. Dave. And and being pushed to do it by every angle that you look at, because exactly. it's normal, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Yeah. No, I, I'm jealous of the, the young people coming up who don't drink. See, I, I wish I'd done that. That would have been great <laughs> if you could yeah. turn back time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't have the stories you've got now, though, would you? <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> All aye, your experiences. Aye. No, that is true. But Do you know what I mean? So, okay. So the plan for the future is in May you're getting married. Yes. So does, does the stag do fill you with any fear or not? It does. Regarding uh, alcohol. We're, we're talking about that. I mean, I know that I won't drink. I'll just, it may be hard. Because it's, it's the one thing uh, that, I've, that there was a, probably uh, stressed me out the most was actually going to the airport last year when I was going on holiday. We, t- we turned up and I said, because the good thing is with Kirsty, I'm quite open, which I was never like that before. But we walked into the airport and the Tartan Army were there. Scotland were playing Spain or something. And they were all drinking and I was like, oh, it just gave me a kind of... I didn't like it, I was like, oh, I feel dead stressed <laughs> sitting here. Uh, which usually I'm fine at a pub and stuff, but it was just a different atmosphere at the airport. And So stuff like that, going to the airport, I'll probably feel a bit, everybody's drinking and we're getting ready to go. Apart from that, I, I know I won't drink, but it will probably, it'll be difficult. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's see, awkward, isn't it? You know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm 19 years in recovery and I still don't really no. like like yeah it's not, it's not that I want to drink don't get me wrong that, that yeah. ain't a thought that goes in my mind I just don't like the vibe that goes with no. the, you know like and then you're talking to someone and they're like bang 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 hold on you've told me that they're in your face they're too close and everyone's getting a little bit and yeah. it's like whoa I've had normally for me I'll set myself a two hour limit and if uh, yeah. two hours I'm feeling okay I'll extend it but no. if I'm not I'm gone I, I, I think that's where I'll struggle uh, as I said I've seen where I'm going to be staying in the area and we went yeah. in there uh, briefly when we were holiday just to see where I was going to be going and this was during the day and I was like fucking hell like there was, there was young guys and lassies walking about totally at their face this was like in the morning so, like, this is going to be a disaster at night time so I, I know I know that will be hard because as you say you go into a pub and after a few hours you're like I've heard this story talking rubbish the folks 
kallaði ég kassan ég tjáði þetta í þeir bafsi ja hann ítti go yeah and best scenario yeah exactly but is the best scenario no no totally i think having a having a plan in your own head is important in them situations that would be my advice having a plan in your own head you know yeah. to get to certain levels where will you go what will you do you yeah. know because you don't want to put yourself into a dangerous situation do you and then have no plan exactly exactly so i think one of the guys who's coming is actually he stopped drinking not sure if he's gonna he, he just stopped for health reasons for a year to see how he felt but he we had been up with drinking so i'll plan who's here the room with me on who's going to drink the least <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's the best option, isn't that, it? That, that's about the best I can do. Uh, it, it's only, I think we're going for two nights. And I'll, I'll maybe throw in a couple of rounds of golf so that that breaks up the day a wee bit as well for me. So that'll be the plan with that. And it's the same with the wedding. Like, it was something before I was going, how can I get married without drinking? Yeah, mate. I and know. Now, now, I'm like, course, isn't it? now I'm like, that's ridiculous. It'll be absolutely brilliant. Uh, but it's just these, these milestones that you feel that, because we always, you know, you know yourself, if you go to a first birthday party, a wedding, a funeral, whatever it is, there's alcohol is involved. The beauty is when you get to the point where you don't think about the alcohol and the occasion as, as one, do you know what I mean? It's like, the thing, that, as I said to you, the only thing that I think about is the, is the, the, is the people. Uh, and am I comfortable in the environment with that amount of people? Because I just find it a little bit boring and all, I ain't gonna lie. It, it, it's, a, it, it's a little bit like, oh, like, I've, I've, I've heard enough and um, you're boring me I've got to go because it ain't that riveting is it let's have it right when people are off their face uh, and you can barely understand what they're saying uh, and they might be using cocaine and they're doing whatever they're doing and it's like they're charged up and it's like da, 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 in your face it's like whoa <laughs> <mate>. <laughs> oh that's no, that, that, that. Me. so what's the future holding for you Ron what's your plans you, you know you've, you're, you're just over a year which I think's massive and I'm assuming from the way you've spoke today is that you're one day at a time, you don't want to be drinking no more. That's that's your uh -huh. that's your target for life, isn't it? You're yeah, done. for life. That's me, kind of. Done. That's the that's the plan. Yeah, uh, yeah man. I, I'm not I'm not stupid to think it's going to be dead easy. It's going to be hard. <laughs> uh, but just keep working hard and, and and focus on it as you say, day at a time, and that's it. That's literally so, all. So, so let's look down here, right? So yeah. So the so when you when I ask you what the recovery programs you use, you 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 threw yourself into fitness by the looks of it and health. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you also learn about alcohol. So how did that work? What what was that? So see what is it? It's the books I was reading. See right. see when I read the, the unexpected joy of being sober. It was just yep. it, like I, as I said before, like growing up, you don't really get taught about it. I knew nothing. Didn't know it made us feel better. The drag made it feel made us feel happy. I didn't know any of this. Uh, when you're reading about marketing and stuff, you're like almost like you feel tricked. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We've been brought up with this big massive lie and we're all falling for it. Uh, drinking this shit every other night. So when I was reading stuff like that and I'm reading facts and figures with these books that, I, that I've, I'm actually reading another book just now, that this they could mind, but when I'm reading these books I'm going, holy fuck, like how did I not know this? So that, that helped because I'm starting to understand it a bit better. I'm saying, right, that's why I feel this way when I'm drinking. That's why I feel like this way. Do you know what I mean? So that, that itself helped. As I say, my, my pal, uh, who's obviously been through the programs and stuff like that, he was a massive help, but... Was he there right at the beginning for you? So I'll tell you a story how I knew him. So I, I worked in the barbers for all, I'll, I'll go into a wee tangent again. So from the age of about 20 to 23, 24 before I joined the police. And I was in the co-op, I met Clark, his name is, met him. And he just told me, like, you would never imagine this, because I used to cut his hair, such a nice guy. Never any issues, what I could see. And he said, oh, but I'm an alcoholic, blah, blah. He told me this whole story and I'm like, wow. holy shit. But in the back of my mind at that point, I'm thinking, I've got an issue with drinking. Oh fuck, you knew. You so knew. I knew at that point, I had right. an issue. And he's telling so me he's this. Been put, he was put there, he was put there to plant that seed, man. Aye, so, so yeah. he's, he's told me that at that age, he said like, oh, I've stopped drinking, I'll get, I can get done drunk driving or something like that. Uh, and loads of issues going on, but he told me that he'd stopped and how he can see life now without alcohol and he would never have seen that before. And he told me this story, that was fine. 
I think I seen him for years after that. Uh, and then I met him at the gym again, talking away, he was doing well. And it was when I decided to try and stop a couple of years ago, done the usual Facebook search, I did have his phone number before actually, phoned him, texted him, he got in touch, he was brilliant for there, and I, I stopped for a while, went met him with a coffee and a chat, and as I say, such a great help, loads of inspirational messages, always at the end of the phone, and then I, I, I went back to drinking because I thought, hey, I, I've managed a couple of months, I'm fine, and then this time when I decided to stop, I got in touch again, it so when you yeah, so when you drink, Ryan, you don't talk to him. Is that how it was, really? Aye, aye. I would yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, just yeah, avoid because yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that. Yeah. Because I'd spoke to him and I said, "Look, I'm going to try and moderate it." He was always no, like, don't try and moderate it. You won't. Uh, and he, he told me something. We went for a coffee, and this was when I had stopped. But then I went back to drinking after this, stupidly. But he said, "Tell me what you're doing." So I told him how I was drinking, how it was affecting me, and he said, "I'm going to tell you something." See where you are just now. Fast, he said. I was at that point. He said, fast forward five years, and I was drinking straight gin at four in the morning, waking up during the night to get a drink, and I was like, fucking hell. That that to me gave me a bit of fright. And did it? Did you did you feel that that could be you when he told I, you? Totally. Yeah, good, like, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. probably even after that, I started noticing that it was slipping. Like, right. I was fine, but like as I said, physically, I wasn't quite how I was before I was drinking a bit more I was able to drink more like, drinking later into the night waking up hungover going to work stuff like that having blackouts all this was starting to add up you could buy the pub during the day and you're, you're, you wish you could go in for a drink at 10 in the morning and it was starting <laughs> to get worse and worse. do you know what I mean it was starting to get worse yeah mate yeah. and uh, when I decided in December I contacted him again and we've been in contact ever since and Right, okay. He, so he's he, like you said, he's like your sponsor, isn't he? He is like my sponsor, and I thought so he's, yeah. he's been brilliant. Uh, probably before him and the other the other kind of close family and stuff like that, I would I would probably really struggle. Like, even, yeah, mate. like, he, he's been probably the, because he's got life experience, it's been great. Like, even my sister, we, are, we, are, we don't always see each other, but like her and her, her partner and stuff like that, they've been a great support. We, like, I remember sending a, this was a couple of months in, sending a picture and I said, I'm on the beers, and it was an non-alcoholic beer, and she, it, I mean, she just made a wee comment, but she said, God, I was actually starting to cry there when I read that, and, and you think, Jesus, you don't realise how much I actually, like, how much these people actually feel about it, uh, she's like, because you're doing so good, I'm so proud of you, and when you hear that, it's nice. Fucking beautiful, uh, mate. Aye, 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 so, so stuff like that. Yeah, I suppose that wee group I've got has been brilliant and that, that yeah. has been my sponsor slash support but, but Clark especially because he's got the he's got the life experience with it and he's kind of pulled me in a wee bit at times when I've been like alright I'm fine yeah hey, so, so you so you know it's a simple question for me this yeah. you must feel really proud of yourself totally uh, yeah man because yeah. it's see, see if you told me when I first stopped you, you're going to, the, the changes it's made in me, and like you're going to manage to be a year and, and keep progressing. And, like, I would never imagine to ever sit and go, I don't ever want to drink again. Yeah, yeah. Because it used to be, you probably the same as me, when, when you first walked into a pub, that you'd get that, oh, I should get him a beer. But I'm yeah, sitting drinking yeah. a Diet Coke. But now I go in and I don't want it. Yeah. I don't, don't, don't think about it. No, exactly. Yeah. It's, and, and do you know what time gives you that? But it, also acceptance, I think, is massive. Like yeah. when you get to that level, like you said, that one day at a time you don't want to drink again. Yeah. That's acceptance in it. You've had a fucking enough, right? Yeah. You don't want to do it. Yeah. You've, you've fast forwarded that tape, which you can do in life in general. Yeah. And you've seen what's coming to you. You know what's coming, didn't you? Totally. If you carried on drinking, you know what's coming. There ain't. Yeah. You can kid yourself, but you yeah. know. You, you know what's going to happen and for me my biggest fear was like growing, like my kids growing up and like fucking hating me or like not speaking to me like oh here's my dad are you, or are you even dead Ryan are you dead I, I, that, that's do it do you know what I mean nah totally that, that was that's my biggest the, fear yeah mate that's the reality and I'm looking down here as well and you did obviously use social media quite a lot to your advantage so you joined like you said earlier in this podcast you joined uh, sober communities and you found that useful? Aye, so I've got a wee app, it's called I Am Sober 
Right. All, all it is, it's simple. But to me, it really, really helps. And it's, it's it just counts your days sober. Okay. So you yeah, get, I've heard of that. Yeah. Aye, aye. So you get to a week and it gives you a wee badge. You've earned the week badge and two weeks and a month, blah, blah, blah. And on there, there's, there's obviously loads of people that put stories up and post stuff and stuff. And reading that and keeping yourself in that wee environment as such really helped. Right. And yeah, I never yeah. had Instagram before. You know, I got the sober Instagram and that's been, it's been brilliant. Yeah, 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 and it's nice, and it? I mean, like, I've never done, I've never been a social media man. It was I only joined social media in September of last year to yes. promote like a community group that I've got, and yeah. it's like I was told to go and do it. People were saying, "Go and do it. You've got a bit of passion. Do a couple of like yeah. videos and let people see your passion." And then the next thing I know, I'm on Instagram in September or October, and then I'm launching a podcast. I'm like, "What the fuck? Where's this come from?" Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, Oh, mate, it's genuinely, I feel that if I've always had issues with social media, but my mindset now is if you're using it for the right reasons, it, it, it can be very positive platforms. Totally, totally. Hey, hey, my, my, my next step, I don't know if I've told you this before in the paperwork and stuff, but my plan moving forward is like when I first stopped drinking, I thought I love the gym. What would, I'd like to become a personal trainer as well. That's my, my, obviously my work at the minute. But I'm kind of starting to think now, the longer I'm going, that I'd like to maybe incorporate that way, help people stop drinking. So I want to be like a personal trainer, but maybe aim towards people stopping. So that is the plan moving forward, probably this year and then next year I'll hopefully take off a bit better, have a wee kind of community with that sort of stuff. So. That Do you know what? That's beautiful. That is beautiful because every person, and I mean every person that I talk to who, who is in recovery, all want to help someone else. And I say this all the time, like, <laughs> you've just hit the nail on the head then. Like, if you can turn your profession or, you know, in a pastime or profession into something that you love and yeah. someone else gets benefit from it, yeah. how fucking beautiful is that? Aye. Yeah. I think, see, I've said this before to loads of people. Without the gym and fitness, I would never have stopped drinking. Okay. Because it, it, if you get right into it, it takes up so much of your time. You need to think about your diet, what you're drinking, blah, blah, blah. And gives you a bit of focus. And I think without that, I would have really, really found it tough. Uh, so I feel that if I can get enough people in, it's surely going to help. If they, can, if they can focus on the gym and if it's somebody who's also stopped drinking, you don't know. There could be one person who watches this podcast who yeah. he, he listens to exactly what you just said then, right? And then goes, I'm messaging that, man, because <laughs> I want to do a bit of that because that's going to help right. me. And it will help people, right? It, yeah. 100% it will help people. Without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Um, and you know what? The more people like you out there who want to help other people who have suffered or suffer in, we, yeah. need, we need you all. We need yeah. you all, don't we? Totally, totally. As I said earlier, like the, the communities on the, the wee app that I had and on Instagram, all, the, all those people I've got on there collectively have helped me. Because yeah. every wee post you see, it's, it's all to do with people stop drinking. And if yeah. you see that, it builds up a wee picture in your mind and that, that's, yeah. the, that's the sort of stuff yeah. you're seeing every day. So you're like, it keeps you going. It does yeah, keep you going. I, I agree. And do you know what? From my own personal point of view, when I started this podcast, right, the anxieties that I'll, I would have built up in myself to sit here in front of a camera and talk to you or talk to the next person and yep. then put it out there, right? That's that's a, that, that ain't me. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't do that. But talking to you guys and reading the posts and all confidence building, genuinely all confidence building, I now don't give it a second thought. Right, I look at it, I think, nah, do you know what? I don't care what other people think. You know, this is there to help someone. So if someone gets one person gets help from it or one person's life gets saved from it because you never know that's enough man we've exactly. done our job haven't we 100 percent. That, that's what it's all about isn't it so yeah, it, it, it will definitely do that your, your podcasts have been good i've listened to a couple of them and it, it will Thank help uh, i heard the guy last week is it mike is it michael last week i'll oh, mark with the week before ah, yeah, he, was yeah, I heard him. <laughs> he was good he was good oh, <laughs> he's a lovely man he's a lovely man he really is and uh, yeah he's good Listen, I'm looking at our time. I want to ask you, and we're going to leave it on this one. I'm going to ask you, like I do everyone, a, 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 a pointer or, or a fact for anyone who's struggling or early about, what would be one piece of advice that, that you've learned or you know that you would give them? As I said earlier, 
I would say for somebody just stopping or newly stop is probably patience. Have have patience with it, trust the process. Don't think too far ahead because it will just, uh, for me personally, it stress me out. Uh, so I would say patience is a big thing. Take it a day at a time. Uh, and probably embrace the, the online sober community. Get in about that and get speak to people, take advice because you might get advice with 10 people but if two of the people's advice help you then you've got to go a long way. You'll, you'll, do you know what I mean? It's a lot easier, I think, speaking to people with a wee bit of experience. Keep so, talking. Uh, keep talking and be patient. <laughs> right. Listen, Ryan, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks. And I want to keep in contact with you because I feel like I feel like we could have a good cute few conversations. And I Brilliant. wish you uh, all the best for your wedding as well in thank May. Thank you very much. Year. Thanks very much. Ryan, take it easy, man. Take care, of it. Cheers. Thank you. Guys, I hope you're enjoying the Sober Stew podcast and the episode today. Listen, I'm asking for a massive favour here. If you like the show, you like the podcast, and you feel like you're getting relevant content from it, please like and subscribe and share the channel, yeah? The way I see this is the more people know about this channel, the more chance we've got of spreading the message of recovery. And that might change one person's life. And if we do, that's enough. But let's look at it in a different way. If we save one person's life, that's massive. Please like, share, share, subscribe. God bless.